Hi, welcome to Bladebound Saga. Uh, I'm AJ, also known as Professor Bulk. And my name is Daniel, otherwise known as Rice Combo Online. And today we're doing a tier list on the subclasses for Daggerheart. Welcome to Bladebound Saga. So, like AJ said, we are doing a tier list on the subclasses of Daggerheart. Um, this is our tier list, our opinions, and I know tier lists can get super divisive um, because maybe we put your subclass that you're currently playing, that you're thoroughly enjoying, mm. in C tier or D tier, and you're like, no, I'm, ha I'm really having a great time. Um, that be it's not saying that that's a bad subclass, as even one of my favorite subclasses in the whole entire game, I even put in C tier. Um, but it's essentially what we're doing is just kind of sharing what we've kind of noticed in the amount of games that we've played. Um, I'm just, I'm just getting so close to 100 games of Daggerheart. AJ, I think you're well more than 50, maybe a little yeah. under 50, something around there yeah, something in terms like of that, games yeah. played. So my perspective is mostly from the GM and from someone who just plays a bunch of tabletop RPGs. And then AJ, your perspective is kind of the, of the same. Yeah, of the player. Yeah, of the player and seeing what everyone else has done with their subclasses and... Um, yeah, like I said, this is our opinion, and that's okay. You can have your own opinion. Yeah. And I want to uh, preface saying that I feel like Daggerheart is actually in a pretty good state of balance. Even a C-tier subclass, in my opinion, can still have success. And so this is not to say that we're going to tell you that some classes are just unplayable because I don't believe that to be true. Yeah. So the main parameters of what we're kind of looking for is kind of the ease of building, how easy it is to, is it to build a specific uh, subclass, um, how effective it is in actual play, like are, do these subclass actually reflect the mechanics of the games of Daggerheart, and then are they versatile in campaigns? Um, so in other words, it's like, are they specifically kind of niche to a specific play style, or can they kind of be used in any campaign um, in any way, shape, or form? Uh, that being said, other words you could kind of say it, if you had an x-axis, it would be clarity. If you had a y-axis, it would be optimization. And then if you had a z-axis, um, it could be flexibility. So uh, that being said, it could totally be a little bit of a vibe check too, because a little this is kind of just how we've experienced the game of Daggerheart. Mm -hmm. And so our table might look different than your table. And so if we do want to know what you think as well, so if you think we're wrong, let us know in the comments. If you have a different perspective, mm -hmm. um, we'd love to hear it. Um, but with that being said, I think we just kick off um, maybe a little different. Let's, and I think we always do it alphabetical order, so that would be probably Bard first. But let's kind of flip it and start with um, Wizard, which I think Wizard. AJ and I talked a little bit about this before. I think we both have a pretty, uh, a pretty similar consensus on where we feel. Um, mm -hmm. So AJ, how do you feel about the school of war let's start there so the school of war is it's okay i think there's a potential to do some decent damage um but the school of war just doesn't really to me it just feels a little lackluster um and it relies on you rolling with fear to really be effective which is then also making your gm more effective so I don't think the benefits outweigh the costs, in my opinion. Yeah, I think one thing to me is the School of War is so wizards in general get really or access to some really cool spells because mm -hmm. they get Splendor and Codex. Um, and so I think as a wizard subclass, I don't think School of War really makes the wizard a better wizard. Mm -hmm. Um and I think Wizard kind of has a little bit of an identity crisis as well, just in general in Daggerheart. So it's not saying that Wizards are bad, because you can play some pretty good yeah. um, Wizards. And I think School of War, one thing that it does fairly well is it allows you to be the tanky wizard, which other tabletop mm -hmm. RPGs don't let you be, especially because it gives you um, some extra stuff for evasion, mm -hmm. um, and then also uh, an extra armor slot, um, which is nice. But it really doesn't offer a whole lot outside of possible increase in numbers, which you'll kind of yeah. see that in Daggerheart, um, the n uh, gaining one extra die doesn't necessarily mean you're going to deal more damage since it's a threshold-based system. Mm -hmm. So 
gaining one extra die could have a variance of one to ten if it's a d10. So you it kind of can be all over the place, and that might not necessarily mean you increase you got to the severe threshold that you're wanting. So, um, yeah. I guess I, we're both we both kind of came to the consensus. We both said that the School of War was C tier. C tier, yeah. Yeah, I, I think, and and kind of putting a little bit more definition behind these S tier. Essentially, these are going to be your um, classes that Just... are going to work every single time no matter yeah, what no matter what a tier is kind of where i would consider the point of balance um this is what all classes i think should um reflect should be mm-hmm. um and then b tier is these classes um are really good it just might need a little bit of more or <clears throat> might you might need a little bit more resources whether that mean more stats mm-hmm. some specific domain cards to make this work um better and c tier is um a little bit more niche so you can definitely make something work like i said wizard's mm. still good it's just you do need a little bit more work and you're not going to get that from the subclass and then d tier mm. is basically completely unplayable needs to be reworked um daring to press please change something quickly please <laughs> um so yeah but yeah um all right so with that i guess let's hop to the school of knowledge the school of knowledge has some cool things in my opinion about it this is the this is a subclass if you really want to dive into experiences and you want to make an experience monkey, I guess you can call it instead of a skill monkey, but if that's what you want to do, uh, school of knowledge is the way to go. I mean, they're getting a bunch of bonuses to their experience. You can, if you roll with a few, you can double your experience modifier. Um, so if you're trying to play that role play slash supporty using your experiences, school of knowledge is pretty good. Um, aside from that, though, I think, again, this subclass kind of falls with the, uh, it doesn't really help make the wizard a better wizard, but I think there's some cool uses for it. And I think you nailed a little bit of it. Like, this is your this is your experience, Bunky. Like, this is, if you want a high, the highest experience possible, you go with School of Knowledge. There's not really anyone that competes with it. But I think the issue that I have with School of Knowledge Wizard um, is it's very hope hungry because you're mm. putting so many bonuses in your experiences that unless you have a class that's battery powering you and giving you a bunch of hope, it's kind of hard to use it because some of your domain features, um, your wizard hope feature, your tag team attacks, your, your help action is also going to cast hope. So mm. how effective it's going to be in actual play might be fairly difficult when you don't have that much hope. Um, and so I think sometimes it does take away from some of the things that you want to do, um, because you're using your hope to both bolster yourself to basically guarantee with, with, with a high enough experience, you're basically guaranteeing, um, that it's going to work, but there are other classes and subclasses in the game that have the same effect of giving you that bonus, but kind of more free and not requiring that hope spent. So, um, AJ, what you put school knowledge, I put put, uh, school knowledge also in C tier. Yeah, I um, I did too, and I actually will say that I think School of Knowledge is a little lower than School of War, just a little bit. So I can see that. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, I think this then brings us to Warrior, uh, as we go up in order. Um, first with uh, Call of the Slayer. Okay, Call of the you've, Slayer. You've played Call of the Slayer, right? I have. I yeah. have in. Let me tell you that Warrior, in general, was one of the most slept on classes, in my opinion. Um, everyone was too busy talking about the Guardians. And Warriors, man, they're good. Warriors are really good. Um, but as far as Call the Slayer, I like I like the Slayer dice. It's, it's kind of hard unless you have a lot of ways to get a lot of hope. I feel like I wasn't using a lot of my Slayer dice because I was just trying to stack hope mm-hmm. instead to do tag team. But it's a nice feature if you have a way to generate hope more. Um, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, and I, I think so. You'll, I think we'll see a little bit as we go through this tier list that there are some classes that are kind of just stat increases like all they do Mm -hmm. is increase the amount of dice increase the amount of your accuracy um which i think slayer does a really good job of but i do think it does have a little bit of an edge over some of the other um subclasses that do similar things just Mm -hmm. because call the slayer you are you get all the extra features that you get from warrior you get all the extra features from the blade and the uh bone Uh, domain 
So you yeah. get a lot of synergy and you're getting increased stats, but your domains also help you um, take advantage of those extra stats a little bit better than some of the other subclasses. Um, yeah. And I think Warrior just kind of gets a boost because it has one of the most effective reactions, which you don't see a lot of. Um, just having an attack of opportunity to do different things gives you something to do as a reaction. I think that just in general, the the uh, uh, turn economy that that, that brings uh, bumps it up in my opinion as well. Yeah. Um, we're, so where where did you land? On Call of the Slayer? Yeah. I have Call of the Slayer in uh, either I guess the low A, I think, is where I ended yeah, up. Yeah, I had it. it low A too. So I mean, it's the, the high first B, one. low A is what I was thinking. It's the first one on here, so low A is definitely yeah. where um, I kind of put it. We'll see where it kind of stands as we continue on, because I know we're going to mm. get close, eventually get to these disagreements. Because I think this is our yeah. first. This next one, Call of the Brave, is probably where we first disagree on. Oh, is it? I don't. Okay. So, or at least not disagree, but we have a little bit of a disparity between our, okay. our tiers. So, um, Call of the Brave for me. Um, I'll talk about it because I really like this class um, <clears throat> because I especially because I overlook this class and I still have yet mm -hmm. to see someone in any of my games play it um, but I'm playing this uh, soon in a game that I get to play in um, but the Call of the Brave over the past year I've noticed Daggerheart specifically um, the classes that thrives are the ones that have hope generation um, or at mm -hmm. least have some sort of resource generation that they give to um, not just themselves but their players so things like Soldier's Bond um, is a staple in most tables at this point. Um, mm -hmm. That being said, Call the Brave allows you to battery players as well and give them hope. And it becomes a very supportive kind of a leadership uh, subclass. Um, and, I mean, the first part is uh, you can um, essentially increase your hope die to a d20, um, mm -hmm. which is amazing it's to really begin good. with. Uh, which is what order domain does. <clears throat> so if you are an order or an order born call of the brave, that's just so much uh, a D twenties that you get to use in, for your hope. Mm. Um, and then the capstone I think is what really kind of set me on like, this is by far one of the best capstones because no one else has a feature like this. It re it gives you an extra tag team, which is already great, but then it also reduces mm. the cost when people want to tag team with you down the two. So, it, it's already giving, I think it's specialization, um, gives hope, but then it's also making it where people are reduced whenever they bring you in. And already as a warrior, you're already dishing out damage. Um, so for me, Call the Brave, I'm, I have a, at a pretty high tier, but I'm just curious, what, your, what are your thoughts? I got Call the Brave in high A. Um, okay. Could be convinced to low S. So the, the specialization where you get a D20 hope die, it's really good. Um, you have to be lower than two hit points to use it, though. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of a little bit niche, but it's it's good when you need it, especially. Let I think more so for saving throws and such, and less for attack if you're that low of health. Mm -hmm. But I think you are right, though, when it comes to the mastery. I mean, it's it's so good. You you, you you're getting so much value for, um, for a mastery thing. Uh, because everyone can just initiate with you for one less hope and save the team anywhere from three to six hope. Yeah, um, especially plus having two more. Plus you being able to do two uh, tag team attacks. It's uh, that's a. I agree. That's probably one of the best ones. Well, I think also since we, especially since we've been playing at a lot of the higher tiers, because I think some mm -hmm. people don't realize just how much the GM can do to fight back. Um, the Doombringer mm -hmm. passive or those Doom effects, where they're yeah. taking, where the GM takes hope away from you, um, based on the based on the adversary, mm -hmm. I think really kind of just makes it where your hope generators are so much more important. So your guardian that gives a soldier's bond, your seraph, mm -hmm. your bards, those become so much more important. And I think Call of the Brave makes it so you can dish out damage, but then also support the team. So yeah. I am okay with it being high A. I put it in S tier, like it, mine's low S. Um, mm -hmm. I think we can probably start there. So right now, okay. I mean, we will have both. Um, both oh, no, the Warriors and A. Where's it, where's it at? I think Call we can Brave adjust. Yeah, we can adjust too. You know, it's our it's our video. We can do what we want, right? Yeah, yeah. We'll see. What, we'll yes. see if there's any kind of weird things at the very end. But yeah, um, yeah. Warrior, I think, is really good. Really good. I'm I'm really happy with the Slick. warrior, especially with other tabletop RPGs like the fighter, which kind of gets a little bit of a bad rap. But um, 
it, mm. I know many people who played the fighter in Dungeons and Dragons, and then they play the warrior in Daggerheart, and they're like, the warrior is amazing. I mm. love playing marshals. And I don't hear very many people saying I love playing marshals in uh, D&D nowadays. So, mm. cool. To the sorcerer, right? Yeah. Which one do you want to um, go first? <laughs> let's do the elemental origin. Let me see where I put that real quick. I think this might be, the, I think the source is where we are going to disagree the most. Probably. So the elemental origin, it lets you choose an elemental and you can kind of use it to, to shape some harmless effects. Additionally, you can also describe how you control this element to um, help in your action roll, then do some stuff, right? So they're all about controlling the elements. Um, I, I want to hear what you have to say first this time about the elemental origin. So. I, so similar to Call of the Slayer, um, it's a lot of stats. You get, um, you can add a plus two to your roll, you can add a plus three to the damage. Um, at mastery feature, you get to pick two, so you can increase a trait, threshold, proficiency, armor, and evasion, I think. And then um, another one is uh, you have this kind of field that allows you to um, increase your evasion and if you increase your invasion then kind of like a bone domain thing I think there's I think it's death maneuvers where you roll and if you increase that division it's, it's a little it's a little higher so you're mm. less likely to get hit so I think it does a really good glass cannon style of game um, but once again for me with be it with it being a threshold based system glass cannons I think don't n nearly aren't nearly as effective yeah. as classes that can collaborate with other players because I I've seen so many people hit with big numbers, but they're just 10 shy of mm -hmm. hitting that severe threshold versus if they did a tag team attack, you <clears> have a, a, like 20 damage and 20 damage e equaling 40 is always going to be better than the 30 damage that you do by yourself. So for me, I actually don't have this very high. I put it in B tier. Yeah, um, I ended up with it in low B as well. Um, just because it was... I mean, yeah, it's a lot of good stats. You can get some good uh, bonuses, but it's just kind of it, right? It's, uh, if, to me, it's not a super exciting mm -hmm. subclass, um, but it's cool. It's usable. It's uh, Numbers are always good. Um, it just, to me, doesn't add a ton to what the sorcerer is. Yeah. Um, so I have it in low B. Now, versus what I have, and this is actually, here's this someone who I did not like sorcerer. Not that I didn't, mm. I didn't, necessarily hate it or okay so i didn't necessarily like rate it properly because i was just like i don't like sorcerers in D, &D. um i think they're kind of niche and mm -hmm. i kind of al always had like a really bad flavor because i always hate wild magic wild magic's not really something i'm into um but sorcerer has completely proven me wrong in in the way that you after reading through it a little bit more and in seeing it being played um primal origin is a very good in my opinion a very good subclass um and i will and I'll, I'll i'll jump straight to the mastery feature because this is the only class that does something like this um it's the only class that can increase the difficulty score that a an npc has to roll um no other class has the ability to increase someone's difficulty score so i can't just make my 17 reaction roll um make it a 20 reaction roll that's required from the gm um that in and of itself, I put that that skyrockets it, but then it's also bolstered by um, being that person um, in your specialization feature that when you help an ally with a spell cast roll, they gain advantage and it's a D8 instead of a D6. Um, and after the spell cast roll, at least one time per long rest, you can swap the values of duality <laughs> die. So if you had a 27 with, or if you have a 22 with fear, you can make that a 22 with hope mm -hmm. um, just because. And like that ability to steal it from the GM, give you guys a resource, um, is just really good. And then the foundation feature is basically just um, meta magic. Yeah, it's just and a, the reach. Yeah, meta magic add, put in. Yeah. Make it add. So I originally had primal origin in A, um, but kind of just looking at it a little bit more, um, it does do a lot. It does a lot. Yeah, I think A A is where I'm at with it. I think Sorcerer is a little bit weaker than just as a base class than some of the other ones. So sure. I think that's where my I'm hesitant to put it in S. Sure. So I think the the Sorcerer Hope feature 
It was okay. I mean, it's not the best, mm-hmm. but the the channel raw power can be kind of cool too. I, you know, to me, it's a little, it it doesn't. It's a little niche. Has just a little bit of nicheness to it. Is that a word? Um, so I think for me, Primal Origin. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, no, that's right. Primal Origin. I think I'd keep it an A for me. Okay. I mean, I'll come down to meet you. Um, I definitely will say that I put an S. Um, I just think this one, in terms of any of the other damaging subclasses just kind of takes the cake just a little bit more mm. um yeah the the I, it's it's really that mastery feature that mm. um that puts it over the top for me but yeah would you say it's probably the best magic blaster we have in Daggerheart? i would say so i would say that this is probably like in comparison to the, all the magic that we have with that being said the serif could dependent when yeah. we get the serif which i think is actually next anyway um mm-hmm. it could be a little bit better but i do think it's a it edges a little bit more than the than the serif just because it's more consistent yeah so all right well, yeah. hey, speaking of serif uh, yeah <laughs> yeah <clears throat> let's go with the uh, divine wielder first because i feel like i see a lot more divine wielder than i do wing sentinel um because i think everyone wants to live out their uh thor you know, their their Thor fantasies <laughs> of returning weapons and bouncing. Th- it's super cool. I, I get it. I did the same thing. Sure. I no, no shade thrown here. I like, I think the Seraph as a class as a whole is really good. And so, yeah, I have, I, I mean, yeah, the Vine Wilder, it's spiritual weapon. You get to throw your weapon close range. It comes back. Sparing touch is also really good. Um, just an ability. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can clear two hit points and two stress, and then uh, your specialization, it just uh, lets you use it again one more time. Plus, you can re-roll uh, your prayer dice. And the mastery is, I mean, it's just all really good. You can uh, roll additional damage for your spiritual weapon at that point. And I, to me, this is, this is A tier. Like, if I was going to, like, this is a, the where... Um, the balance should come from. I think Divine Wheeler hit it, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I think Divine Wheeler is really good, but I don't think it's so over the top that um, I don't think it's broken. This is a very solid class, in my opinion. So I put uh, Divine Wheeler just A. Just yeah, yeah, flat A. And I think one thing too is just like the fact that Divine Wheeler also makes your prayer dice more consistent. Mm-hmm. I think is a really big thing. Um, the serif already with that prayer dice feature does a lot. Mm-hmm. I there have been so many moments where I'm like, ah, that's I, like everyone knows what the DC yeah. is. They're trying to get that 18. Someone rolls with a 15. It's like I'm going to use my prayer dice. And it's like mm-hmm. perfect, and they and they hit it. Like the prayer dice being just a flat number that they roll, and then having more consistent higher um, uses of prayer dice, I think really mm-hmm. kind of showcase or helps it. And I I agree. I put it in. Um, in A. I don't think I'll put it higher than like Call of the Brave or Primal Origin, but it's definitely um it's yeah. definitely A. Yeah, to me it's like this is the middle A. This is this is the 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 anchor point in my opinion mm-hmm. of other yeah. subclasses. Yeah. Um so but yeah. um but that being said, I think um even though Seraph is an amazing class, I think it's one of the one of the better classes in um Daggerheart. I will say Wing Sentinel kind of does leave me for a taste of a, wanting a little bit more. Uh, yeah. Flying is great. Don't get me wrong. And there have definitely been moments where um, a character flying is makes things easier or makes things a lot better. Like I just ha- I just threw a combat at some players and it was all it was all in the air. Um, you either get thrown in the ocean um, or you need a, need a way to fight them in the air. And the fairy was basically the only one who was able to go to, able to fight. Um, and then another cl- uh, one that I played recently, they basically needed um, their druid to be in sky form the whole time. So definitely usable, but I just think marking a stress to deal additional <clears throat> attack isn't good enough. The mastery feature of in- increased thresholds of a, a plus four, you can basically get that through um, yeah. leveling options yeah it feels weak as a mastery in my opinion that being said though the specialization that is really good um whenever you uh while you're flying you have advantage on presence rolls and if a roll is success with hope i can instead choose to just remove the fear so if i'm maybe at max hope or if i know the gm's at low fear i can stop him from using abilities 
mm-hmm. by just taking the hope instead of gaining or taking the fear away instead of take, um, taking a hope. So I think that's a really strong ability. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I think, I mean, is there any other abilities that lets you take away things from the GM? Not, if, if there is, not, not many. Not many. Um, I think there is one other subclass that we'll yeah. get into, but um, yeah, and I th- yeah that that ability right there is what keeps Wing Sentinel in the running for me a little bit. Um, I think it's a very strong specialization. But I said everything else about the Wing Sentinel, it's cool, but it needs a little bit more. It needs it just needs something. I would honestly, um, I would have liked if Wing if Wing Sentinel was taken out of the game and they replaced it with something like a healing Seraph or something. Mm-hmm. I would. I wouldn't be upset. Like I think that makes sense too. Like I, I think yeah. Sentinel is one of those that it the game kind of could go without, but it's here. And so, yeah. um, for me, I put it at I put it at a little bit of a higher B tier because of that specialization. But it's definitely yeah. not the point of balance. Like uh, yeah, Divine no, Ruler was. I agree. I, I have it in B tier as well. If you wanna, if you wanna be tier though, hey, this is your chance. It's just yeah, yeah it's okay. Cool. But, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, the next one though, uh, Rogue. Ah, oh, Rogue. Poor Rogue. I'm I'm sad because this is as soon as I read this subclass, this was like this is my favorite subclass. This is my play style. This is how I love playing games, um, and I will take this uh, whenever I get a chance. And my first character was a Rogue. Um, specifically, why I'm kind of upset is because of how low I even yeah. put it on the tier yeah. list. Um, I'm gonna well, we'll start with Syndicate because that's my first thing. Um, Syndicate is. I'll start with a tier. We put it in C tier. I put it in C tier yeah, at least. Uh, yep. And I think that's a general consensus from a lot of people in the community. Um, I do kind of want to put it a little bit higher than Wizard because I do think just for maybe it's just me. I think maybe realistically yeah. it's probably lower, um, at least lower than War. Um, but the the main reason is it's because it's incredibly niche. Um, mm. It requires you to be in a setting where um, you're in a prominent town or environment. Um, mm. If you're in a dungeon, it's kind of hard to like find a new favor in terms of your mm-hmm. f- foundation. Um, it could work where you meet, uh, like if you're in a forest, it could work where you're talking to an animal that you rec- that you recognize. Um, yeah. And that's totally doable, but it is one of those things that's like, I think it just, it just isn't enough. And then it's specialization features. I don't think it's enough either. Like it doesn't, the shady contact giving you money, giving you an increase in hope and fear. It's similar to a prayer die, um, yeah. but it is only a once per session. In comparison to the prayer dies consistency and then the mastery feature is um really good in those social in social situations but it is specific to a of a campaign type mm-hmm. um i don't think it can be used in any every campaign and it, it, it honestly you're probably fighting it um but yeah what are your what are your thoughts i have a couple more things but i'm just curious yeah. before i keep continuing on about why yeah, yeah. my favorite subclass <laughs> is in c tier uh, it's it's super niche um, I know you can always reflavor things to fit. Um, it just, I just feel, it just doesn't feel, it just it doesn't feel like every other subclass, right? This is just some weird outlier. Like, hey, you just have people come in and help you, you know, just random ass people that you make up. Which, I mean, hey, if you're playing in a very heavy RP in, you know, the slums of a city and you don't plan on living or leaving that city. I think it could be pretty good. I think it could be fun, um, but uh, I know we talked about how will, how would this fit at most tables. This doesn't fit at most tables in most um, scenarios, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, it just feels really niche. I'll go so far as to say a couple things. Um, I have a um, levels five through ten campaign that's currently going on, and one of my players is a rogue. And initially, picked Syndicate Rogue had such a hard time figuring out like when to put. That when to use some of the specific features because it just didn't feel like the moments that we were having in the <clears> campaign <throat> really made sense. Um, eventually, we, we kind of talked like, "Hey, you you've kind of been playing a little bit more like the Nightwalker anyway, so you want, do you want to switch?" Mm-hmm. And they ended up switching because it made more sense to their character. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think one thing that the Syndicate Road does kind of hurt the table a little bit is it can even be an issue for the GM, especially if they don't have a strong improv muscle because mm-hmm. you springing up a contact in the middle out of nowhere can might mess with some gm some at some tables um oh, yeah, like kind of that. that i know a guy person kind of personality yeah. um but you kind of did say one thing that i definitely agree with the syndicate could 
be the strongest class in a high yeah. role play, even like a heavy political campaign. Could mm-hmm. be the star face of the group. Um, it, it, that's totally something that can happen. Um, but it is one of those things where in the normal game of Daggerheart, it still probably sits pretty low. Yeah. Yeah. So I think yeah. I keep it in C, maybe high C. Um, but that's that's where I got it for me. Yeah. So yeah. Um then this goes to Nightwalker. Um Nightwalker I think I think Nightwalker is the quintessential rogue, at least in Daggerheart, because it's so whimsical. Um great movement to a shadow step. Um Rogue already has one of the best hope features. Um, yeah. So it makes you prime to use those hope features. Mm-hmm. Um, doesn't have any conflicting, uh, like, it do- It requires you a stress to um, jump. It doesn't require you a hope. So you're like, you're, none of your resources are conflicting. I think mm-hmm. it's very well balanced. Um, and with its mastery, uh, you kind of can almost go unstoppable and makes it really hard for you to get hit because you're already a rogue anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, there is one little thing that I thought was kind of odd that I'd kind of take about take down is one of its features in specialization adrenaline um, requires you to be vulnerable, which mm-hmm. isn't somewhere that I necessarily mm-hmm. you don't want to get to a point, especially if you're trying to evade everything to be vulnerable. Yeah. That's kind of a disadvantageous position um, and for your feature to be triggered that way kind of just felt weird. So, yeah, I agree with that. The um, and it, it feel like the. Uh, benefit of it is not very good like you can add your level to the damage rolls like okay so I can get 5 to 10 more damage you can get that with a sneak attack Mm -hmm. uh, and not be vulnerable Yep, and be hidden while you do it so yeah I agree with that that's kind of a weird thing for me Um, I think the more I look at it I had I originally put Nightwalker low B I don't know. It's not as bad. I don't think it's as bad as I thought it was, though. I think it has some really good places. Like, you can be sneaky. You can teleport around. Um, with Rogue having the you know one of the best hope features and being able to pop off sneak attack, I mean, you and use... Midnight as a domain is really good. Yeah, it's really good. So... And so, I, I think maybe... I think B is where I'm landing with it, because I don't think it's better... <laughs> I have it in low A. I have it where it's like this class I think is a point of balance. I think you can like you can put this in any any game, any situation. You're gonna have good use out of it. Um I'll probably fight for it a little bit to stay in A if I'm being or like low A if you're just putting in B. But it's like there's nothing wrong with this class. I mean, adrenaline is a little weird issue. Yeah, but, but it's like, but you all, but you get dark cloud as one of its special mm. or specializations anyway. So you're not missing out on a specialization. Mm. Um, but I, I'll, I mean, I'll fight for it a little bit. Um, we can put it in high B, low A. I'm, I'll yeah. let you make the decision on here's what I'm thinking. A or B. It, for me, I'm just trying to figure out: is it better than Wing Sentinel? Yeah, I and would say so. I think I. I'd, I think so. Yeah, I think so too. Honestly, Wing Sentinel is good, think, but it's it's, it's okay, really yeah. just the one feature that makes it good. Yeah. So um, Nightwalker has good features all the I way can, through. I can I can I think low A. I think low A is okay. okay. Yeah. I think cool. low is okay. Just the more I was looking at it, kind of has a little bit more to it than I gave it credit for. Sure. So I think low A is is a good place. Cool. All right. I was at least able to convince you one way when I had to yeah, yeah. come down from all the other ones. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, so now we hit uh, Ranger. Ranger. Uh, Let's start with the one that I know you don't like as much. Um, you, but after reading, I know we talked a little bit. You really liked it a little bit a more. You gave it more credit. Which one? The, the Wayfinder? Wayfinder? Yeah, let's start with Wayfinder. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts as someone who is an avid Beastbound player? <laughs> I'm an avid Beastbound player. I'm an avid Ranger player when it comes to a lot of games. And I first off, I think the Ranger is a great I mean, it's a great subclass, just or a great class in general. Sorry, let me get. I got some notes here. I took notes. Wayfinder. There we go. Um, I think Wayfinders. If you're doing a lot of traveling, if you're going back and forth to places, Wayfinder is. I mean, so good. I mean, if you you've you, uh, your foundation to um, visit somewhere, if you're going to somewhere you visited before. Uh, you find a shortest distance super good if you had to get somewhere quick. Um, 
even the the apex predator mark a stress to increase your proficiency by one on a damage roll and if you whenever you mark severe damage to an enemy they also mark a stress like that's a that's a really strong foundation um that i i think i just overlooked honestly um that's a really strong foundation the specialization when you're attacked by your focus which is your your hunter's focus uh your you uh your evasion is increased by two i mean solid your, your rangers are going decks anyway, so having more evasion is really good. And uh, before you make an attack roll against your focus, you can spend a hope. And if that roll succeeds, you can remove one fear from the genius roll. This is the other one we're talking about. The Wayfinder, I think I put it too low in originally. I think the Wayfinder has really good, really good things going for it. So um, here's what I will say and why I think Wayfinder is not at the point of balance. Because I know you like Ranger, and we've had this conversation mm -hmm. a lot, but Sage Domain being Ranger is very weird and counterproductive to some of the things that Ranger, or the Ranger wants to do sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit too druidy. Um, and I think Wayfinder really benefits from some of the stuff like the Corrosion stuff, and mm -hmm. um, it can benefit from the Bone Domain very much so. Very yeah. clearly benefits in the Bone Domain. Yeah. But I think because it's brought down a little bit, and Wayfinder, you kind of have to fight against the domains you're given, I do bring it a little bit lower. That being said, once again, uh, just like what we talked with Divine uh, Divine Seraph, or Divine... Or Wing Sentinel, sorry. Yeah. Um, just like we talked about with Wing Sentinel, the ability to remove fear from the GM is a, is really great. It's really um, good. And I think this 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 ranger being someone who's focused on dealing damage and kind of being this midway point, I still think fulfills the fantasy of the ranger, but mm -hmm. I don't necessarily think it's like the point of balance. Yeah, I think I think you are correct when saying Sage is a weird. Kind of, yeah, Sage is not exactly what we I, I would want for the Ranger. It's the closest thing they have, though, I think. But there's some good Sage spells, and Bone is, in my opinion, the best, I mean, the strongest domain. Could be. Could be. One of the strongest. <laughs> One of the strongest. It's, One of the strongest. it's really good. It's really good. Um, Sage is okay. I, I like that there's some utility that you can use to your advantage with it. Um, I originally put... Wayfinder in low B, I think Wayfinder could be found above Wing Sentinel in high B or low A. I have it right below Wing Sentinel, only because Wing Sentinel gets it gets their removal from fear um, one level sooner. But I, thinking about it too, it's like I could also go with like they're but basically the, the same level because Wayfinder has better foundation and specialization yeah. features that support the the play style um, or way wayfinder has if i didn't say that correctly you uh yeah so I, I think they're basically the same not the same class but i think they sit on the same tier i don't think they're yeah. they're the ones that like when you think of the the ranger in dagger heart i don't first think wayfinder mm -mm. so but it is slept on and i think i can yeah i can see I think more so it comes down to I think Seraph as a base class is better than Ranger as yeah. a base class, and so I think yeah I think right underneath Wing Sentinel I think I could I could there's a I'm okay with that okay cool yeah now I'll just let you go on your uh, yeah let me, um, words on. because this is your favorite <clears throat> subclass in the game let me uh, let me get up on my high horse how do you real feel quick. about the Beast Bound <laughs> man so at first I'm not gonna lie to you when I first played it I was like ah this is okay. It's cool. You got a little pet, whatever. And then you start to look into your beast bound and you realize that, hey, this little pet that I have can take 500 damage and it's going to mark one stress from it. Um, it. To me, it is one of the best tanks damage absorbers in the game. There's a lot of different options with beast bound. Um, and the fact that you can customize your your um, companion, uh, to me, Beastbound is top tier for me. I mean, this is my this is my first S of, uh, in my tier list. Like I said, you just you have your campaign or uh, your companion to level up. They add to your they can add to your evasion. They can give you more hope. 
Um, they can do damage. They can give you more move speed. There's a, there's a lot of different things you can do. And, like I said, they can take so much damage. And they can even save your com you or a companion from, like, taking their last hit point. Say you're out of healing. That's the the mastery is uh, once per long rest. If the damage would mark your oh your companions or your last hit point, and you're within close range of each other, the other rushes to the side and takes the damage instead. So uh, potentially this can you can save yourself or your companion. I think it's really good. Um, I have it in S. I if I'm going to be realistic, I could see it going high A, but I have it low S right now. Yeah, well, let me knock you down a peg a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Just kidding. Um, but so Beastbound, it's it's a really good, and I think you brought a lot of the strength down. Um, now, this is what I've seen a couple times based off of some other players who've run Beastbound, is it can also be a little, uh, not necessarily gimmicky, but in the same way that if you can take a bunch of damage and it's still only one stress, you could take one hit point and it's still one stress. Facts. So the the... the the pros and cons are both ways. So you mm -hmm. ran, you get hit in the little bit of spray from uh, Dragon's Breath, and it's still one hit point. It might not have done a, n nearly as much damage, but it's still one hit point. A bandit walks up to your um, beast bound, still one hit point, still marking a stress. So mm -hmm. things can whittle at it a little bit faster. And I've seen like um, both sides where the beast bound becomes um, the savior of the session. Um, and I've mm -hmm. seen the other times where the beast bound's like, all right, uh, you, I, I summon you, and now you're gone. Mm -hmm. um, so I've, I've seen both sides. Um, and I think with, uh, the, the ranger, once again, that whole sage thing, I think beastbound fulfills sage a little bit more because mm -hmm. you can tie a lot of your stuff to the beastbound and you're not yeah. necessarily focused on you as the character. And so your spells can be a lot more supportive. Um, like say you want to take a towering stock or whatever, you can totally do that. Um, so I think there's a little bit more versatility with the beastbound. So I do think it is a little bit better than uh, wayfinder. Um, but I don't think it's S because I don't think it's one of those things where you put the beast bound in um, you or like the beast bound is not one of those things where you can have a party of beast bounds and it's going to um, completely destroy every single thing. Cause I think beast bounds might have some weaknesses, especially when it comes to like being very fast on like uh, or your stress going down really quickly, um, having to min max or having to manage both, I think can be a little difficult for players. Um, cause I have seen that side of things too mm -hmm. for new players who struggle to use their pig or other beast and also use their character. So usually kind of ends up being one of the, one of the other. So for me, I actually put it in lower a, I actually think like the, the brave and, and all that, but I think, um, I do think it is good. I think it's the point of balance and I think it is the quintessential ranger subclass in Daggerheart. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, I, I, I hear your points, and I, and I do agree. I can agree with some of them, for sure. <laughs> that it's uh, that yeah. I, I guess I really didn't, never really took into account to the hey, one damage is also a stress, and a hundred damage is a stress. So it's a yeah, it's a two way street there. And you know, if you're not using your 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 companion to its full potential, then it is a waste, right? Yeah. Like if he's just there chilling and you don't do anything with them, then what's the point? I also think. Um, so yeah, I think there's a little bit more of a, I guess, an entry floor. Like it has a little bit higher of an entry level to it. Yeah. Um, just managing two different character sheets, even if it is just a, can a companion. So for me, um, I would probably put it right between Brave and Slayer. Like I think it's definitely better than Slayer. I think it's a little bit weaker than Brave, but that's just because Brave is very well rounded. Yeah, I think Brave, with all of its uh, generation, or it's like hope, hope generation. I think it's. Yeah, I think I can agree with that. Okay. I can, I can yeah. agree with that. So, cool. Um, yeah, so now we get to go to what I think is the best class in the game. Um, and I think a grand uh, majority of the of the community will say this is the best class. But I think there is a little bit of a discrepancy between which we think is better, between the Vengeance and the Stalwart Guardian. <laughs> um, I, I, let's go with the one that we I think we both agree on. Stalwart Guardian is S. Yeah. It we is. cannot you cannot kill this class you can't yeah it's it's nuts the the amount of things that you can do um and with the mastery you cannot kill allies um stalwart guardian uh foundation feature 
as soon as you get hit, immediately reduce that damage by your armor score. Mm. You don't have to spend an armor. You're just you're you, as if you build the armor correctly, which the guardian is really good about building armor um, with the uh, domain cards that you get access to, and plus unstoppable with resistance. Yeah. It's there's just so much going on with stalwart that makes it where you cannot kill this thing. Um, do you have any other thoughts? I mean, I'm just going to straight up put it in an S, but what are your thoughts? Yeah. This, this is the one very obvious one to me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it's just you don't die, and you make sure your team doesn't die. Unstoppable has all physical damage. Um, you increase your uh, your armor score. Your Guardian's Hope gives you back three armor slots, which is massive if... You you're using plate mail, which is what ten ar- you know ten armor score. I think the guardian synergizes with itself just the best out of most classes, which is why I think that the guardian is the strongest class. I think it has the most synergy synergy within itself. Yeah, one hundred percent. The and domains just, are perfect for it. Yeah, the class features and the subclasses, yeah. both of them really do really well. But stalwart takes the yeah. cake. So yeah, I mean it just it just you you don't die. And you're gonna, you can still hit hard because you still have access to, is a blade, right? Blade and valor. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, yeah, yeah. This is the tank. This is the. I'm not gonna take damage, and my uh, teammates, if you're close to me, are not gonna take damage. Yeah. So yeah, this is S. Cool. You can't kill this thing. Doesn't matter how hard you try. All right, easy one. Don't yeah. even have to spend too much time there. Yeah. Now, Vengeance, I think, is amazing. Great, just as well. Yeah. Hard to kill because you already have base guardian. Mm -hmm. and if you get hit you do something that i think um in terms of the mechanics of daggerheart um going into the math a little bit more this is one of those things where you're able to reduce the damage or the or or reduce or deal damage to an adversary without using an action token which is basically Mm -hmm. just this free retaliation if you get hit so similar to kind of how slayer or uh warrior has that opportunity attack Vengeance has its own reactions, um, which there aren't very many of those in Daggerheart. So I think mm-hmm. that one bumps it up. Um, but then the specializations, extra damage, and then you have the uh, mastery, which is just kind of uh, that focus ability of like knowing you're about to jump into the fight with a big bad makes it where you prioritize. You can switch the values of your hope and fear so your fe- your GM doesn't gain fear, but you kind of lock on on one enemy and that's that's who you're going to take down um, i like that it doesn't make it where it's just like the one individual that you have a vengeance mm-hmm. against it's like whoever you decide so yeah, yeah. I, vengeance is it's really good it was even stronger and the and at the first release because i think you just used to just take damage if there's someone dealt damage to you they just took damage back yeah auto hit. um so having now a it's better to, because there's a roll yeah, to it's, it it's it's a uh, yeah it's it's definitely more balanced um i think vengeance is really good too i think if you want to be more i don't know i want to say selfish but more damage focused and still be the tank i think vengeance does that better than stalwart um, but Star Wars is your is more of your supporty. You're not dying. Hey, you're not gonna die either. Uh, vengeance is I'm not gonna die, and I want to make sure that you die. Um, yeah. Or if I'm dying, you're dying with me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so th- I mean, this is your essential barbarian. Yeah. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I would say I mean, high A. I think this is. Yeah. Um, I don't it's, know. Like, it's, I, it's I have not... a sweet spot for Primal and Call of the Brave and. So I'd say it's just higher, just between Beastbound and Slayer, but I also kind of can be convinced mm. for it to be an S two, but I don't think it's an S. I don't have I have it as my the highest A, and just the fact that it's Guardian, honestly, just the fact that it's Guardian, and it does, I mean it's still it does really good damage. I know you know Call of the Brave is still you know has access to damage, but I feel like that Vengeance, the Vengeance Guardian can do pretty close to the same amount of damage that a warrior can yeah while easily. also being tankier and being more having more survivability i think the delineation between call of the brave and vengeance for me um i know we're not talking we're not going back to a review section we'll talk about this mm-hmm. maybe later is call of the brave you have more support and you're a dodge tank versus vengeance which you are a um mm-hmm. kind of more of that like high thresholds um lower or like the traditional yeah. tank um, but there's no supportive capabilities, which is why I don't have vengeance nearly as high. Yeah. 
and I have called the Brave in ST of mine. <laughs> but we'll, we can go back to the beginning. Uh, let's yeah, yeah. let's run through the rest of these. We only yeah, have yeah. two classes left. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, we'll go to Druid because I think Druid's yeah. at a pretty good spot too. Yeah. Um, I'll start with what I think is the weaker one, which is Warden of Renewal. Um, my reasoning for Warden of the Renewal being lower, and this really kind of goes a little bit, and maybe Seraph can got knocked down a little bit. I still think Seraph's just good in general. Um, is really for Warden of Renewal, healing is not always as needed as damage mitigation is in Daggerheart. Mm -hmm. If you can mitigate that damage and not take it, I find that that's more um, usable and effective and in most combat scenarios. Um, you can survive by marking all your armor and then taking a little bit of healing here and there from some, from a small subclass. And I don't think Warden of Renewal being a dedicated healing subclass is necessary in the game. That being said, obviously, once you get to higher levels where things hit harder, sure. I think uh, Warden of Renewal can help a lot, but I don't think it's needed, um, especially because you can grab healing from uh, domain cards. So that's all I'll say about it. Um, it's a dedicated healing subclass yeah, so it's a dedicated healer there are times though when i mean that that one or two hit points healing someone in combat does change the tides of the battle it takes someone from death so it takes someone from death's door and allows them to either get away or to react or something like that so um i agree that maybe you don't need a fully dedicated healer but can it can it can be good um, I have, uh, but at most, I mean, I agree with you for the most part. I have Warden Renewal in uh, lower B tier. I do too. I don't it's think good. it's unusable. I think yeah, you can take it and good. it can it's work totally in every, good. in any game, but I don't think it's n nearly as needed as yeah. other subclasses. Um, but hey, if, if you like, if you like that healing play style, um, by all means, the, the Sage does a really good, Sage domain does a really good job of it and the warden of renewal just makes it uh that much better i yeah. go for it it's yeah. it's it's viable it's totally viable yeah i also think um, the one thing i will say bring it down to is the healing requires three hope which i think is mm, a lot for healing considering lot, yeah. some of the other three hope features mm. so it's it's just it's high resources to be able to heal based off of just the class itself so um but you, you do get Druid base. So I think one thing we didn't talk about, which is why I think Elements Druid is a little bit, is going to be in a higher tier, um, yeah. is uh, we didn't talk a little bit, we didn't talk about Beast Form when we talked about Word, Word of Renewal. Yeah. So you, you still and, get access of it, which is why it's yeah. definitely not C tier. And, um, but actually, Warden of can Elements. Actually, can Beast I come Form. back to yeah. Word yeah, yeah. of Renewal really quick? Um, the Mastery actually uses your Beast Form. Mm -hmm. um, so there may be a little bit of an argument to bump it up a little. I mean, I don't know. It says your anvil transformation embodies a healing guardian spirit. While you're in beast form, when an ally within close range marks two or more hit points, you can mark a stress to reduce the amount of hit points. So it does have a little bit of that damage mitigation yeah. you're talking about. I don't know if that moves it for me. I, maybe it doesn't. I just we I, you talked about the beast form and it made me think of that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean I it's good. Bees, bees, I think bees where it belongs. Yeah, it's I don't. A good, think it's a good it's... class. I think it's, it's still it's still balanced. It's still something you should you can pick. Yeah. Um, but I will say, given what Warden of Elements can do, as I was transitioning. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I just think it's better. Um, Warden of Elements being able to do the elemental form in tandem <clears throat> with Wild Shape, um, because of, or yeah. Beast Form with how good Beast Form is, especially mm -hmm. at those higher tiers. Um, for those who don't know, at higher tiers you can turn into a dragon. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you can turn into those different elemental dragons at will. I just think there's just so much versatility. Um, <clears throat> it took a little bit to understand how Wild Shape works because there's a little bit more yeah. mechanics to it. Um, and Demiplane even doesn't necessarily do everything automatically. Mm -hmm. So you do have to do a little bit of the the, the work um, overriding different scores um, or just mm -hmm. doing all the work on your sheet. But um, I, I think Warden of Elements is just, I am a, I am a druid. I am now a better druid. Yeah, I agree 100%. With Druid, Sage Domain makes all the sense. There's no issues with it. I played a Druid recently in a game, um, which I had a bunch of fun. I was able to play a Tank Druid, um, which I was like kind of hesitant because my armor score wasn't great, but I was able to bump my thresholds up with uh, Trans, trans um, or Beast Forms and Warden of... Or not, sorry, and then the, the Elemental features. So I yeah. think it has a lot of versatility. Yeah, and I think the druid was slept on at first. Um, 
and even playing with a handful of druids i know at the beginning kind of when dagger first came out that a lot of people were just hey i'm the the wildland magic caster and i don't think that's the correct way to really play it i think you play b shape and then swap out a b shape to do spells every now and again but i think b shape is your main source of of damage and of tankiness and how you do combat um, I, I also played a druid where uh, we went from level one to level ten real quick and man the b shapes were a lot of fun and you could do a lot with them and also having access to the different spells i man yeah and plus also with the uh elemental incarnations on top of that it's it's really good yeah, I think I think what Druid in this system does better than other systems is you can switch in and out of um wild or in and out of your wild shape, your beast form with the little mitigation. Like in D&D, &D, mm -hmm. if you go into your beast form and you want to sh um uh, you kind of have to commit to staying in there yeah. just so that way you can keep that health. Um because if you jump out, then you no longer have that health pool that you just shifted into. Yeah. Um, so there's a little bit more of a, and you can only do it a certain number of day versus in this system, yeah. it's amount of the amount of stress and mm -hmm. there are ways to mitigate your stress. So you can build around that mechanic and you can swap <clears> in and out of jump in a beast form for two turns, then switch, cast a spell, then make an attack roll, then switch back in the beast form. So you can shift in and out pretty or without a penalty for the most part, which I think is yeah. why I put that a little higher. And for me, yeah. I put Warden of um, uh, Elements in low A. I don't. I think. I think there are better classes. Yeah. I don't think. I think it's great class. But the only yeah. reason it's in low A is because there are just better classes. <laughs> yeah. So. <clears throat> cool. Yeah, I have it in low A, and I and I'd probably I I might put it above the rogue class. Yeah, I can see um, that. I can see it going above rogue yeah, class. I don't. I don't disagree yeah. with that. Um, beast That's form's just a though. lot stronger. That's, it's yeah. Um, I think. Yeah, well, I think the with rogues they just require more hope, and so mm -hmm. yeah, I think warden elements makes sense going a little higher. So cool. And last but not least, the trusty old bard boys. The bard boys. You've played a bard. <laughs> I played. I played a bard. I haven't in played a bard shot. in the system yet. Yeah, I played a troubadour bard. Yeah, how do you feel about that one? Um, it was a one shot, so I feel like I didn't get the full flavor of it. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a lot. I think there's a lot to it. Um, just you know, starting out with you can heal, you can make enemies vulnerable, you can give hope. Your spell casting is presence, which makes you obviously the face of the party. Let you do the role play. You you got your rally die. I think bard as a class is pretty good. Just with the rally die feature alone, I think that's a really good feature. Yeah, bards are pretty good. I uh, I don't know actually remember where I put it. I have troubadour in mid B. I actually think that might be a little low. So I, this um, is a theme, at least for how I've been rating this tier list. Troubadour for me is A. The big reason yeah. is hope generation. Yeah. Anytime you can give your players hope or give the other players around the table hope, I just think is such a good feature because you're enabling <clears throat> them to do tag teams, enabling them to do help actions, experiences, mm -hmm. domain card features, um, or the class feature, like giving them the ability to do these kind of core abilities to other people's classes i just think is so strong for me yeah um i have this above uh way of the slayer like this is like um th i don't think it's nearly as good as uh call the brave though arguably depending on the setting i think um these kind of just sit in tandem um I, but i do think bard in terms of what it has is just a little weaker um if it had access to midnight i probably would like really love the bard but it, since yeah. it's uh codex um and uh, grace grace uh it's it, it's it's meant to be the face of the party anyway so yeah. i totally get why but i yeah. just <clears throat> think it it's just above call the slayer just below call the brave uh maybe a little yeah, above the it, beast bound <laughs> but and uh i think that it also depends on what kind of table you play at like if you play at a real heavy rp table i think the bard goes up higher than call the slayer yeah um, but if you're not rping as much then you know the bar and the bards are always like this, right? It all it depends on how much you're using your presence or your charisma or whatever stat that is. Um, it depends how much you're using that outside of combat as well as in combat. So, um, and so that's for me, it's kind of always hard to place a bard in one specific place just because it just depends. Yeah, um, they're a different think, style of play. 
Yeah. Um, uh, but the bard's this bard's really good. It does it does a lot of or it does a little bit of everything. I have no problem putting it in a. Yeah. Uh, would you say it's better than Slayer? To me, it's it just, is. Hope Generation is just so good to me. <laughs> I, it is. I I'd almost put it above Brave because maybe not. I mean, Trudor does Trudor does more support, obviously being a bard. Um, so just a little above Beastbound? Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Well, we can argue about these four, I think, yeah, at the yeah. very end. but Or these five at the very end. But um, last but not least, Wordsmith. Um, I'll kind of say what I what I have on with it. I think it's really good because it gets base bard. Um, but I do think it's limited because it's kind of... It's fairly rare um, for the need to clear stress. Like, I don't think I see people go into vulnerable status often. Mm-mm. And... In terms of Heart of the Poet as a base feature, um, it's almost just better to just help someone or have them use an experience. Like if they have a yeah. plus three experience, one D four added to their roll <laughs> is kind of less consistent. Um seventy percent of the time it's the exact two. same thing, or um the twenty five percent twenty five percent of the time it's a plus one, mm. which could matter, but I just don't think it's a um it's big. But it is redeemed by the mastery feature. Um, it being able mm. to help with a larger help die, I think is really strong. I mean, that's the same reason why I put, um, oh, what did I put earlier that had the help feature? Was it Sorcerer that had the Primal Origin Sorcerer? One of those um, had yeah. the help feature increase the die to a D8. So Primal Origin has yeah. that. So it has that, that, but it also is at mastery. So it takes a while to get there. Yeah, it's 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 not bad. It's pretty good. Um I think I do think Heart of the Poet is kind of a waste because, like you said, you can just use an experience to. Yeah. And if you're playing a bard, you're gonna have your performance experience usually built mm-hmm. in, and you can bump that up to plus three. So rousing speech is is okay. Uh, like I said, a lot of people don't go vulnerable, but there are some classes are that use a lot of stress, so yeah. it's not a bad thing. I have I put the wordsmith in. High C tier. High C. High C tier. Actually, put Wordsmith in um, B, like just, just higher B. B. I kind of put it a little bit higher than Wing Sentinel, but as we've been talking, I think Wordsmith might be a little bit lower. So if you put it <laughs> high C, I put it high B. We'll do low B to be in the middle. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. I think especially with the Rally Die being a D10, I think that's really good. And yeah. it's kind of just free. Um, I. I kind of would like to see that maybe a little bit earlier, but that's okay. Um, so. Yeah. All right. So that's currently the tier list. Do we have amendments? Uh, so I'll actually say this before we make amendments. This is good yeah. where we're at. Like this is a very good spot for any game to be at. Yeah. If your point of balance is A, B, and you have a lot of your classes in A, that's really good for the state of a game. Yeah. Like... It's great that we don't have anything in D, but that's completely unusable. So that's the first yeah. part. Um, arguably, school and knowledge might be that D, but but even it's... then, there's there's a niche style for yeah. using your experiences to to use it. So yeah, I'm, not, I'm I couldn't put in D. So I could yeah I couldn't either. And so at least as of now, the point of contention here is: Does anything else need to go up to S for me? And this is this is my final pitch for the three subclasses: Primal Origin. And I'll, I'll say why. I, I looked at those domains mm. earlier. So Primal Origin right now. Um, earthquake. Um, make a spell cast roll 16. Um, then all targets within range must make a reaction roll 18. That's at level 9. Because you're a Primal Origin, that 18 instead becomes 21. For a GM oh. to have to roll, otherwise they fail, they're marked vulnerable, and they take all this, all this damage. Um, oh. And so for me, like the ability to say, nope, your reaction roll, you're actually going to bump that up by three, um, is something this game does not have. Yeah. And it's the only thing this game has. And three is a pretty big number considering that the GM still rolls a d20. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's at, that is level nine, though. Yeah. And, yeah. and a lot of campaigns don't get that far. Sure. Um, like, obviously, take into account, but. I don't know. I don't really have anything that screams to me, hey, this needs to go up. This is on the same level as uh, Stalwart Guardian. Oh, 
I don't, I'm, I'm gonna really try to pitch at you at one more time then like foundation feature getting me- the only thing with meta magic like you're sitting here if we're <laughs> going with like um you're you're using a cinder grasp and your cinder grasp you're targeting two creatures so you're hitting everyone around you instead mm-hmm. of just one little area like splitting that between two re-rolling the damage dice um, making your spellcaster if you do a proficiency based um, sorcerer that's just using their wand adding the plus two for consistency mm-hmm. um, or even just like you're in close range but you need to hit that melee range making cinder grasp a far range or no, a uh not a, 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 a very a, range yeah or very a very close range, range sorry or very close and then once again the specialization feature that help an ally like you end up being a battery by using the help action and m- helping manipulate their spells to be more powerful than they are mm. um, i just think that that's this is one of those things that i did not care for until i continued reading and honestly yeah. pr- primal origin i think is just a little bit up there yeah, and that could just be from my lack of looking at the, the just the sorcerer in general. Um, did you want to throw it up there? Throw it up there, you know. I, I I'll keep I it think, down, but this it's just because, like, you know, maybe I'm just miss. Maybe I'm. It's just me. But I, just think I will it's the say best, this though: it's best the best caster class. we have. Yeah, it's the best caster we have. It's the best magic user caster. Uh, you know, your your glass cannon, your blaster, by by far. So I'd even be like, if you wanted to throw it up above Vengeance, I actually think that would be okay. Just because (laughs) of... Do it, yeah. It makes you feel better, I know. Um, Because Vengeance is a good tank. It's not the best tank. um, Because it's Star Wars. Um, You know, Call of the Brave, I think, is the best hope generator. Like, aside from uh, the normal means. And yeah, I think it's the best blaster. It's the best magic caster. So I'm cool with it there. Yeah, I feel pretty good about where we're at. Like, I think yeah, this is a solid tier change. list. Yeah. Honestly, like, I mean, I put Primal and Call of the Brave at the top, but I think you kind of grounding me down um, helped. And I know I brought your beast bound um, down mm-hmm. a little bit. But I think this is a good, like, indication of, like, the the, cl- the game is in a really good spot. Yeah. Once again, those Our things at the curve bottom. Is, is, is bellin' yeah, really it, good. It's curving really good. Yeah, and, I mean, like we said, in some of these cases some of these classes could be the star of the show like syndicate could take on take on mm-hmm. way better that or could be s tier in in this specific, in a very specific yeah. campaign setting um but i am glad that we did notice the clear outlier which was stalwart um that yeah. still reigns as kind of its sole king at the yeah. top but yeah so that's that's essentially the tier list um once again we want to know what you guys um think down below mm-hmm. um leave it in the comments Tell us how bad our tier list is, because I know before you guys got to this point, you guys already started typing. Yeah. Um, and if you want to stay tuned for some of our other projects, some of our other videos that we have upcoming, um, don't forget to like down below, comment, yeah. subscribe, um, and check out the Discord. And with that being said, yeah. we'll see you next time. <laughs> yeah, see you in the next one. From ink and steel, stories are forged. We are Blade Bound Saga.